In this video, you're going to learn how to segment your Google shopping products. Hey guys, this is Dustin with Clicks Geek here. Before we get started, if you can please click the thumbs up below, I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more great content. Now let's dive into this. First, you will already need to have your store set up and products uploaded properly. You will also already need to have your Google Merchant Center account and your Google Ads account set up. If you need help on how to do these things, I'll drop a few videos down in the description below. So why should we segment? Segmenting our products improves the targeting and helps with optimizations later on in the process. Okay, so once you're logged into your Google Ads account, go ahead and click on your campaign. And then once you get into this area here, you can segment your products by going to the tab under ad groups and then under product groups, click that. And this area will allow you to segment your products. So as you can see here, we have all products listed here. You just click this little plus sign, which gives you the ability to do segmenting from this point. Okay, and then I'm gonna explain a few things here. Okay, so the first one we have here is brand. Brand allows us to segment by the brand names that we pass over from our store. This is all passed in through the data feed. So as you can see here, whatever brands that are actually passed over into the data feed, they'll show up here and then you can segment further into that. Next we have item ID. This shows us all the products because every item is required to have a unique ID. So if we choose that, you will then see all of the different product IDs that were assigned by Shopify. Next is condition. This shows us if the product is new, used or refurbished. Product type. Product type is an optional piece of data that we can pass through to Google to be used as an internal way to categorize products. So as you can see here, inside of our store, we have accessories, apparel and accessories, baby and toddler, gift sets, and you can break these down into all different types. As you can see, we have Christmas Made in America. The next one that we can segment by is channel. Channel allows us to segment by local or online product inventory. And then as you can see here, all the products are listed online. We don't have any local store data products. The next one is channel exclusivity. This allows us to segment by one of the channels or both. So single channel and multi-channel. And then next is custom labels. This helps us to further segment by other product attributes. And then from here, I would like to dive in a bit more on custom labels and their best use scenario. For example, as you can see from this diagram, I've used custom label and you can see my definition is season and then your choice of possible values. So winter, spring, summer, fall. This is an example of how you can break this out. Selling rate, best seller, a low seller, clearance items, label three as margin. So we can use, we can segment products by low margin or high margin. And then we can do release years to further segment. The options are limitless. But these are some of the labels that we use internally to help segment further. Custom labels are not a required attribute of your product feed, but they can help you to get more granular with your targeting, which can lead to higher conversion rates. They also allow you to make custom bids on the different labels, which is a huge feature and benefit of why you should use these. So let me show you an example of how we can actually do that as well. So if we do have a specific, let's say, product accessory, we want to select this. We want to segment by accessories and then continue to edit bids. Or let's say down here, cause we have Christmas, we can say continue and edit bids. And then from here, we can actually make custom bids based on this. So we can increase this because it may be the time of the year. We can increase this by several dollars, click save. And then now this specific segment of products for Christmas has a much higher bid than our typical products. One thing I did want to mention is that when you're first starting out, you want to keep all of the bids the same. That way you can collect even data on all the products. Unless you have a, a few products that have large variations in price, say $40 and $2, you want to keep the bids the same otherwise. Then once you have enough data, you can then come back and you can actually segment the products. So as you see here, I've sorted these by item ID. I've selected all the products, scroll down so that you can make sure you get all of them. As you can see there, all of them were not selected and then go to continue. And then let's say you have your bids. You can change all of them or keep them all the same, make sure they're all the same. 
and then click save and then they'll come back and then all of them are popping up here and you'll see those. Then on each one of these product IDs, you can make an individual bid on each item. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions, please comment below. Also, I would like to ask you to please like this video if you enjoyed it and found it informative. It helps with the algorithm on YouTube for us to be found by other people so that we can help them as well. If you're interested in working with our company, please reach out to us by using the application link that's just down in the description below this video. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a wonderful day.